attention that it really warrants and deserves. So that's what we're going to be doing, is going through Revelation 19, which focuses on the second coming. Then we're going to get to Revelation 20, and it's focused on the Millennial Kingdom. Then in 20 and 21, the focus is on the New Jerusalem and the restoration of all things, the end of all things, the kingdom coming, God dwelling with man. Now, in some sense, you could go, okay, that's simple. Second coming, millennium, and then the eternal state. Got it. I guess we don't need to study it, right? It's pretty simple. No, you don't got it. It's simple, but you have to understand, these passages, every single statement in Revelation 19 through 22 is a quotation from the Old Testament. And when All right, so let me just give one example here. Let's just quickly go through this and give you one example to support what he's saying. All right. Exodus 19, verse 6, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Now let's go find that in the New Testament. Oopsie. Let's find that in the New Testament. And we see here in 1 Peter chapter 2, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation. Alright, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a an holy nation. Now let's go to Revelation 20. And, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him. A thousand years right now we that are born of God reign with Christ right now and when you go look at the text from which the statement of Revelation derives from you see oh my gosh there's an entire world in here of information and detail I'll give you an example when it quotes Ezekiel 40 through 48 which is one of the most the, the one of the dominant passages that the John is is referencing and recording in Revelation 20 through 22. He's referencing Ezekiel 40 through 48. So we want to take time and go look at it in the same way that you know when you read Matthew 24 and he just says ah when the abomination of desolation is set up and you go where is that and you go oh it's all over the book of Daniel it's all over the book of Isaiah and you start studying and you go wow it's it's all over this thing and it opens up to you and you see it's not just like a concept it opens up a whole world of understanding and this is a world beloved that you really want to have alive in your heart and in your mind and in your emotions and in your spirit is a the reality of the age to come not just in some kind of ethereal imaginary sense you go yeah there is an age to come no where you can really it affects your emotions and your spirit. It affects everything about you. And that's really what I want to exhort you with today as we move into this. And just to keep this short and to the point, is that this is the greatest story ever told. The story of the coming of the king. The coming of the, the, the not the, only the coming of the king, but the destruction of the evil one. The destruction of the villain of the story. Satan is bound for a thousand years. The restoration of all things. You know, this prayer that everyone knows. The coming, you know, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Your will be done. His will, the climax of his will is Revelation 19 through 22. His kingdom coming is Revelation 19 through 22. So it's not something that we want to just have kind of this um, sentimental, shallow, religious jargon about and say, your kingdom come, but we don't actually know what it means. Revelation 19 through 22 gives us in vivid detail what it means, specifically by taking us on a guided tour of the Old Testament. So there's no way to study Revelation 19 through 22 without going deep in the prophets, without going deep in the Psalms, without going deep in the the progressive revelation concerning the reign of Messiah. Yeah, without going deep into the manure. Okay, so this guy, he's talking about the millennial reign of Christ, and there is no millennial reign of Christ anywhere in the Old Testament, in the New Testament. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not found anywhere at all. It's not in Ezekiel 40 through 48. It's not in the book of Daniel. 
It's not in Revelation 19, 20, 21, 22. It's not, it's not in Revelation 23. It's not anywhere. All right. The thousand years that is spoken of in Revelation 20 is talking about this unique time period that we live in where from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return to the time that, he, that Jesus was born of a virgin and laid down his life for the sins of the whole world. He gave himself as a sacrifice for sin. And then he rose himself from the dead, resurrected, and ascended to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. This is a very unique time period that we're living in. And then now all of us that believe in God, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we ourselves are born of God. All right, so let's real quickly, let's go to 1 John. Here, hold on a second. Let me get there first. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Right now, we are the sons of God. Right now, we are born of the Spirit of God. It's a very unique time period, and it's going to come to an end when the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and when he comes, it is the end of the world. And we are lifted up. When he comes in the clouds, we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And our enemy is gathered at our feet. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right? And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. It's the end of the world at the end of the thousand years which is right now because right now we shall never die whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die right blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection which is the Lord Jesus Christ he is the first fruits of them that slept he is the resurrection I am the resurrection and the life. Doesn't Jesus say that exactly? Doesn't he even specifically and purposely say, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And what's it say? The second death has no power. The second death has no power over us that are born of God right now. Right now we are priests of God and of Christ. Right now we reign with him during this time period. Very unique time period that's coming to an end when he returns in the clouds of heaven. There is no thousand year period coming after the end of the world. All right, and all these people are saying, all these people are teaching is this idea. Well, well, if you're not saved now, you can wait. Wait till this thousand year period and you'll have another chance to be saved. That's not true at all. It's wicked. It's pure wicked. You're teaching children that they can wait. You're teaching all the unsaved that they can wait. And you, they, you can't wait. If you're not saved today and Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven today, it's too late. You lost all opportunity to be saved. That's why it's such an evil and wicked doctrine, a damnable heresy, is wicked and evil as the teaching of evolution. It's more wicked. It's more evil. Because you're telling people, oh, you can wait, but you can't wait. You can't wait, and I'm telling you, you can't believe these liars and deceivers who don't know the truth. All right, read your Bible. Believe your Bible. <laughs>